For years, central banks have obstinately pursued a highly destructive monetary policy as the world descends into an unnecessary economic contraction and financial crisis. It's high time to junk it. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. It has long been wholly read among central bankers that the goal of monetary policy should be to achieve a 2% inflation rate. Federal Reserve boss Jerome Powell, for example, declares he'll fight the current inflation until he gets it down to 2%. However, this goal is a critical reason why we're in such a deadly economic mess today. The rise of 2% inflation as the holy grail of central banking led governments to largely ignore barriers to growth, such as high taxes, unstable currency values, suffocating regulations, and wasteful overspending. Those things were downplayed or ignored. By not tackling such structural obstacles, the result has been more than a generation of subpar economic growth and ballooning government debts. They forget that stable money is necessary for long-term productive investment. Without that kind of investment, you don't get a higher standard of living. How in the world did this 2% inflation fixation come about? When the U.S. destroyed the post-World War II international gold standard, the question for central bankers became, If your currency isn't pegged to gold, what metric should guide monetary policy? Their eventual answer, let's target inflation itself. Amazingly, the 2% rate was picked by a New Zealand central banker out of thin air. Numerous countries, including the U.S., followed suit. The flaws of this approach are profound and fundamental. Monetary inflation is, by definition, lowering the value of a currency, usually by creating too much of it. Higher prices are a symptom, a result of inflation, not its cause. Yet astonishingly, just about the entire economics profession has ignored this truism. There's the practical problem of which index to use. There are numerous such measures, the consumer price index, the producer price index, the personal consumption index, and on and on. But there is a deeper problem. How in the world do you influence a price index? Central bankers mistakenly assume that economic growth causes inflation. So they think that by printing more money, they'll stimulate growth, which will create higher prices. Or in the face of higher inflation, do the opposite, print less money. In the late 1970s, for example, during the Great Inflation, the Fed tried to do that and flopped. The trouble is, in the real world, things don't often work the way central bankers think they should. They can stabilize their currencies, but they can't control the actual functioning of an economy. After all, for years after the economic crisis of 2008-2009, central banks failed to achieve their 2% goal. Then along came the pandemic, and inflation ballooned. Central banks must have been in this fixation on 2% inflation, which has no factual basis and is inflicting a lot of unnecessary hurt and governments must focus on the structural barriers to economic growth. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.